Welcome to episode 91 of the G2 on 5G. It's the latest inside scoop on everything 5G. We cover six topics in about 20 minutes, and it's brought to you by More Insights and Strategy. I'm Will Townsend, and joining me again this week is fellow analyst Anshul Sag from Israel. Let's get started with my first topic. So there have been several announcements from T-Mobile. Both you and I, Anshul, are going to cover these. I'd like to cover two. One was an announcement between T-Mobile and BMW last week for uh, 5G connectivity and BMW automobiles. Our principal analyst and chief analyst, Patrick Moorhead, actually published a Forbes article. So if you're interested, Google Pat Moorhead Forbes, and you'll be able to find that article. But um, you know, it's no surprise to me that BMW chose T-Mobile because as you and I have been discussing for many months, if not many years, T-Mobile has been in the lead position with respect to building out a complete 5G network. And so from my perspective, it makes sense that uh, that BMW chose T-Mobile. And sort of in that same vein, this week, there were a slew of announcements from T-Mobile. Both you and I were on calls as well as we had an analyst one-on-one with several of our colleagues with, uh, with Neville Ray and John Saab. But one of the most significant announcements from my perspective was a program that they announced around DevEdge. And what DevEdge is designed to do is provide developers easier access to things like chipsets, APIs, SDKs, so that they can quickly develop new 5G applications. So I think this is pretty forward thinking. Many of T-Mobile's competitors, AT&T and Verizon in particular, have had proof of concept labs. Um, You're gonna speak about an expansion of that for T-Mobile from their past innovation center. But from my perspective, this is very unique and it has the potential to accelerate 5G application development. But what are your thoughts on both of those? I think when you look at the BMW announcement, they've earned that that partnership. I think um, that the one thing that I first noticed when T-Mobile launched with 600 megahertz first was that I thought they were going to win some automotive deals because of that. Sure. Um, Because 600 megahertz has the best coverage. And I just don't think any of their competitors are ever going to have the same kind of 5G coverage that T-Mobile has purely because of 600. Um, And I think for automotive purposes, 600 will be pretty good for most use cases. Mm -hmm. Um, And then mid-band will fill out the rest in suburban and urban areas. So I think BMW was looking for the best solution at the time. And right now that's T-Mobile. Um, and I have a feeling for the foreseeable future will probably be T-Mobile as well. Any thoughts on DevEdge in addition to what I shared? I think there's some, there's still some more I think we need to see from T-Mobile. Right. Um, I think it's in the early stages, but I think they're making the right moves, at least at this point. Um, I think they might be playing a little bit of catch up here, but I think also they have a more mature network. So I think they're going to be able to accelerate this much more quickly than their competitors. I agree. There aren't a lot of details on the, the developer kits that are going to be available. They did speak to the fact that they will offer the first 1000 of those developer kits at no charge. So there'll be some sort of charge for that. And also, I think one of the big challenges, and I think this was discussed on the analyst call that you and I run with Neville and John, it's really how, how to kind of enable developers to really leverage the true superpowers of 5G, which is that ultra low latency and that extremely fast throughput relative to LTE. I think that'll be another challenge as well. But again, details were a little murky, but they should be materializing in the coming uh, you know weeks and months. And Rob Roy, uh, I like that. It sounds like a very Western name. He's the executive that's leading this at T-Mobile. And uh, we might have an opportunity to speak with him in the future, maybe even on one of our podcasts. But that's a nice segue to your first topic. And you want to talk about some of the other announcements that T-Mobile had this week. Yeah, so the Dev Edge announcement was actually part of a bigger 5G forward event, um, which I actually was a part of inadvertently. Um, on the sizzle reel, yeah, on one the of our podcasts. Reel. This podcast, <laughs> in fact. Um, and they announced, you know, this 5G innovation hub, um, which is kind of like a, an accelerator 
for um, startups that want to be able to take their applications and get them on T-Mobile's network quickly. Um, yeah. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how that works. Um, you know, this innovation hub has like a drone testing facility built inside of it. It has 3D printing for rapid prototyping. And they're also going to be giving people money, um, mm -hmm. which means that they're going to actually fund some of these startups to ensure that they have a future and that they can be successful. Um, they didn't really give a concrete number um, on, on what that funding will be, but it sounds like it's going to be a considerable amount of money. And I think they're going to, you know, they're going to invest at every stage possible based on what they think um, makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they've already got a good stable of companies that they're working with. And I think that that list will only grow with this um, innovation hub edition and, you know, the announcement of funding, as well as um, they did kind of allude to the fact that they are going to be using or they are using augmented reality for 5G tower deployments. Mm -hmm. And they're also using digital twins, um, which are both XR technologies. Um, and, I, you know, they kind of alluded to them very quickly in the, in the launch, but um, there's a chance that we might actually find out more about them in the future. Um, yeah. But it sounds like T-Mobile is already leaning into XR internally. Yeah, it's definitely an area of passion for you. My thoughts on the what they're calling the hub, I think that's great. I do think that they're playing catch up to Verizon and AT&T. Verizon's had its alley in Chelsea that I've actually visited in the past pre, pre pandemic. And then um, AT&T, uh, obviously AT&T Labs, that's a huge lab effort. Um, they had a foundry program. I actually was able to visit several of the foundries, including one in uh, Tel Aviv, where you happen to be today. And um, that, that program is now defunct, but, um, but certainly from my perspective, this, this kind of brings T-Mobile sort of up to par with their competitors. What I'll be curious to find out, you know, with, you know, you mentioned the investment in some of these startups. I mean, certainly this could be a real hotbed for T-Mobile to monetize new 5G applications in these cases. And that's been a real challenge when you look at the, you know, the LTE, you know, era and um, a lot of the over the top players, you know, leveraged all of the billions of dollars in spectrum purchase and network build out to, uh, to monetize that. And really the operators didn't do a good job in my mind of monetizing that. So I think these lab efforts and these incubator efforts are tremendous opportunities for, for all the carriers, not only T-Mobile, but AT&T and Verizon to actually monetize some pretty interesting 5G use cases. So, but good stuff. Let me move to my second topic this week. And I wanna talk about Verizon. And this actually, this news broke last week, but Verizon announced that they had landed an over a billion dollar US Department of Defense contract. A lot of this on the surface seems to be, you know, uh, voice and, you know, some telephony connectivity and that sort of thing. But certainly we've talked about the military applications for 5G and private 5G and all that sort of thing. So I didn't see a lot of depth with respect to 5G. I mean, obviously Verizon's been very focused in prioritizing its millimeter wave build out for its ultra wideband service. And that simply just, you know, it's got the challenges, you know, propagation and scale and that sort of thing. But this could be a nice beachhead, you know, not to use a military term um, for Verizon to, you know, really, you know, bring some, you know, some innovation and some wherewithal into um, what the, the DOD wants to do with 5G. But would love to get your input on that. Yeah, it seems like the DOD is uh, diversifying their, their partners in 5G. Um, you know, we know they're working with AT&T. It sounds like they're now working with Verizon and we also know they're working with Dish. So um, yeah, it sounds like T-Mobile is the only one left to sign some kind of deal with the US government uh, on 5G. Well, let's move to your second topic this week. You wanna talk about iPhone. Yeah, so in the previous podcast, we talked about the iPhone SE um, getting launched and that it would be a, uh, a 5G phone from, from Apple, uh, and the first 5G phone from Apple without millimeter wave. Um, and we didn't really know what modem it would have inside, um, partially because it, 
it's the first time they're launching a 5G modem in a low cost device. And, you know, there's, there's costs associated with, with having a discrete modem and, and a 5G modem that would make a, a $429 iPhone very difficult. So yeah, we were kind of pontificating over what modem it might be. And we now know it's actually a Qualcomm modem, hmm. um, but it is not an X55 and it is not an X60. It's an X57, which is not a modem that has previously existed in any way, shape, or form, which means that it's most likely a derivative of the X55, um, possibly with some kind of die shrink um, to make it more power, power efficient. Mm -hmm. um, but it is interesting because iPhone SE is sub six only, no millimeter mm -hmm. wave, yeah. and it's a two by two. So it's not going to be as fast as a lot of these four by four uh, MIMO devices. So we'll see what happens in terms of real world performance. People just got their devices late last week. Um, so people are, you know, teardowns are only coming live now. And this is how we're finding out that it's got an X57 modem in it. Yeah, you know, and that makes sense to me, right? Because the SE is positioned as the entry level for Apple, right? So that doesn't surprise you, does it? No, I, I think it makes total sense. It was kind of just a question of, you know, which modem were they going to pick based that? on the cost profile of the device. And it looks like, you know, this X57 might have, might might be, might become like an Apple exclusive uh, um, modem because they haven't, oh. Qualcomm hasn't announced it for any other customers or in inside of its own product. Interesting. Interesting. Well, let's move to my third and final topic this week. And I want to talk about Qualcomm and a startup called Lavandi. They're teaming up for millimeter wave deployment. And Qualcomm has been focused on this for quite some time. Um, there's a lot of IP that they're investing into stretching the propagation for, for millimeter wave, which is its big Achilles heel. And Lavandi has been um, a startup that's been focused on uh, repeater technology as well. So to see the two of them come together, I think is quite compelling. The details are um, basically Qualcomm is gonna be providing its uh, FSM 5G RAM platform, and uh, it's gonna help um, lower the cost and deployment of what Mavandi is doing. Um, so I think, you know, this is an area that, you know, needs, you know, further, you know, investment from my, pers my, my perspective, just because, you know, the, the power and the performance of millimeter wave are so tremendous, but it's just, again, that limit in, in propagation. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a natural partnership, especially when you consider how crucial millimeter wave is to Qualcomm and how much they've been, you know, pushing it. Um, I think Movandi is a natural partner for them and, and for Qualcomm to help Movandi reduce costs and power is, is also a great thing for Movandi. So I think it's just a great partnership in general. Yeah, I think both companies are bringing a lot to uh, the millimeter wave table. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, that continues to roll out. But let's hit your third and final topic. And you want to talk about AT&T and some new 5G global roaming. Yeah, so AT&T is enabling global roaming in 35 cities, specifically for 5G. Uh, this is gonna be on specific 5G devices. It's kind of an expansion of what they've already been doing. Uh, they already started allowing 5G uh, roaming on some select markets, on some select devices, but they're broadening the program and making it available to their day pass users who are paying $10 a day uh, mm -hmm. for unlimited data. Um, but, you know, this is an interesting expansion because it's probably the biggest we've seen so far from all the carriers in terms of enabling 5G outside of the home country. Um, that said, uh, T-Mobile does allow 5G uh, in countries like Canada and Mexico. Um, I've experienced that already, but it's not the same as 35 countries abroad. So I think AT&T is trying to um, offer this as a service to make their customers happier when they travel abroad and less needing to, you know, pop a, a, a SIM in there that maybe mm -hmm. they might not be familiar with uh, or might be a little bit difficult to find. So I yeah. personally do a lot of uh, roaming and, uh, you know, 4G LTE speeds are nice, but lots of 5G coverage is out there now globally. And I think a lot of people want to be able to take advantage of it with their 
for their own devices without having to go out and buy a SIM. I think the day pass is brilliant. I used it when I was in Mobile World Congress and uh, it's just flexible, it's easy. And to your point, a lot of folks probably don't even know where their SIM card is or you know how to eject it. So I think for you know most folks, this is great. So, but hey, Anshul, it's been another great podcast this week. Why don't you take us home? Absolutely. We hope our viewers and listeners found this week's topics interesting. If anyone out there would like to provide us insight on a specific 5G topic for a future podcast, please reach out to us on social media. Will is at Will Tontech and I'm at Anshal Sog. We hope you have a great weekend and please tune in again next week.